Welcome to the No Excuses Ladies Show, episode number 32. I am Eva Eckert and I am your host. I am on different multi social media a little bit later than normal. But what is the No Excuses Ladies all about? It's a weekly show for all of you out there who wants to become a badass in their real life, who has been struggling with making so many excuses in your life uh, and lead you to unsuccessful and unhappy life. This weekly life can give you examples on how the no excuses mindset can help you in all areas of your life with the foundation of your health and wellness so you can succeed in life and move the needle forward. So no excuses, ladies. Welcome all of you out there, all of you who will, would like to become a badass in real life. Maybe you are already a badass. So this show is for you. I'm here to help you, guide you, support you, and lead you to your full potential. By having me as your accountability coach, you can discover here the power of self-belief, self-motivation, self-discipline, so you can stop making excuses and create the life that you truly desire by being the best version of yourself, of you. So uh, we have missed few shows but the recent show that we did it was all about leadership and today's topic we're going to be talking about being courageous and what a great topic nowadays right because we're facing so many different things in life currently that really courage is something that it should be our priority right what really courage what as courage means to you what is courage to you like if i would ask you what it is is it is it overcoming the fear is it the mental toughness the physical toughness stepping into something that it's crazy and chaotic and uh, and at first cause you the fear really the inform the, the, the what's the dictionary tell us it's the mental or moral strength uh, to venture persevere and withstand danger, fear, or difficult situations. That's what really is. But think about your life right now. Or have you recently came across a situation that required so much courage from you? And today we'll be talking about it. I'm going to give you some crazy examples that happened to us. And we've been traveling recently. We've been to Europe. We've been to Costa Rica. Uh, super thankful for these opportunities. And and, and at that, really, we are able to do that. Uh, really amazing, amazing um, trips and amazing discoveries. But I want to ask from you, like, what has been the current situation that required so much courage from you, right? And uh, think about it. Now, nowadays, like, we face them really daily. We face them in our interactions, in our decisions, uh, uh, really, to have courage in daily life. And especially with everything that is going on out there in life, like think about the past year or two years, right? A lot of people, we've been on such a lockdown and a lot of people have so much fear in them to step out of uh, that, that, that zone of being trapped and really make good decisions, step forward and be, be uh, uh, really relentless and, and not to be afraid. And so many people uh, go, went inside the shell and hide and, and literally... Uh, did not come out for so long. The fear really stopped them from making any kind of action. And when you think about it, thank you guys for joining, by the way. When you think about it, like being courageous, it requires us to take action, right? Isn't like that really what 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 to be courageous means, right? To take action. And, and really in which situations you should really speak up or hold your peace that that's what i would say because certain situations require from us to really go forward and certain situations maybe not i'm going to give you some crazy examples so really stay tuned because this is again what i face your experience might be different uh, you might even have a different point of view but this is what i did and i would like you to uh, stay on and 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 see what would be your reaction so uh, again, by by taking uh, the no excuses mindset, by thinking, okay, there is absolutely no excuse in my life. I need to step forward and I need to push forward and be courageous. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. What are the tools that actually help you maybe become courageous, right? Uh, but 
think about it. Like, do you do you have the guts to say no sometimes? Do you have the guts to not be afraid in a lot of different situations and really think about how your life has been? So uh, I'll give you an example. We've been traveling uh, to Europe, and I was on the very, very long flight. This flight was about 13 hours. We were flying directly. I'm not going to be giving the names of the airlines because it doesn't matter. But uh, we were flying back to the United States, and, and the, the plane was kind of quiet. Uh, the, the shades were down. People were, most people were sleeping. I was doing my work. What I do on the plane I read, I create, I take notes. It's a time to really focus. And I love that because it's a quiet time. How many movies can you really watch on a plane? Like, think about it. I don't know, but maybe you guys watch a lot of movies, but I can't consume that much. My brain requires creativity. That's what I need to do. That's what I really find my purpose to create. And that's what I feel good. But what maybe with you, it's different. So as the kids actually went down to sleep, I was on a close to the aisle seat and I see in front of me, two, three seats in front of me, I see some kind of cloud coming out from that seat. And I'm looking and thinking, wait a second, what is this? And I see, I look around and I look behind and I look to the side and I'm like, am I imagining this? Is this real? What is this, what is this thing coming into the air? And I start thinking, maybe somebody's smoking. But the strictly forbidden sign, it says no smoking. I've never seen. I've traveled for the past 25 years, guys. I've traveled so much. I mean, the trips that I have taken, long, short. I've been on a plane with the little kids for a very, many, many years. They flew so many times. It's crazy. And I'm like, I've been, it's never happened to me. Is this for real? So what I do, I become an investigator. I want to make sure that what I see is true, that I'm not imagining things, that I'm not reacting to things. So I stand up and I go into the uh, lavatory. I And as I, obviously, we were required to wear the mask, so I pulled the mask pretty high so no one can see me. And I turn around. And what I see, I see a lady going like this, inhaling something and puffing it. And I'm like, I am not imagining. I went inside. I stayed there for a second. I thought to myself, what is the plan of action? What should I do? So I'm thinking, maybe maybe this is not a cigarette. Maybe, maybe she's sick. Maybe she's taking some medication. I don't know. I don't know. I have no, I'm not sure what it is, right? I'm just thinking that this is what the electronic cigarette is. And I look around and I see it says exactly no smoking. And we know that we flew. You, I'm sure you guys flew a few times. You know what it is. If you haven't, you will one day, I'm sure. So I come out, I sit down, and I'm seeing this again and again. And I'm like, here comes the thing. I have to take action. I have to speak up. I cannot be afraid. I cannot think what other things. Even if somebody calls me a snitch or say something, this is for good to for this whole plane because this is dangerous that somebody's doing it. So I'm giving a moment. I'm putting plan on action, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to the flight attendant and report to them exactly what happened. So I go on the bed. I don't see someone. That finally, somebody says. So I ask them again just to make sure that this is real. This is true. I said. I asked them, is that correct that there is no smoking, right, in this plane? I said, I'm sorry, I think I saw someone using an electronic cigarette. She immediately turned around and says, where? So I explained it to her. I said, but the lady, because what, what, what I missed, very important thing, is that I stopped by the seat and I said, excuse me, what are you doing? You can't smoke. And she goes to me, I don't understand I don't understand English. Uh, I said, but this, you know, there was a lot of people, Polish people flying. I'm like, do you understand Polish maybe? And she said something in a different language. And I said, okay, I'm not going to be really confronting him. This is not really uh, correctly my job, even though I sh we should say something if we see something wrong, right? But I'm like, let take the authorities to take care of this. I don't want to cause a scene. So I went, I told her. 
the, the, the flight attendant came up to her and here we go. They took away from this lady a cigarette and uh, that was an electronic cigarette. But here comes the thing. Uh, when we face situations like this, like, do you, like, what are the questions? What are the thoughts coming into your head? Like we try to, a lot of times, justify certain actions, right, of people that can happen. Uh, you might be just whatever. I'm not going to be getting involved. This is not my problem. Uh, a lot of times we just very uh, ignorant in situations and this can cause a, a chaotic outcome. In this case, you don't know. And this is the whole plane we're talking about, people's life. And I'm like, this cannot happen where we are flying. So I took the option and I spoke in. But would you do that or would you ignore? Would you step into the shoes and step, say someone, would you speak to the person or would you go by? My first thing was a very nicely approach this person. But I realized that this person is not capable of uh, really talking to me. So I thought, okay, let me give this in the hands of someone else. So uh, <laughs> pretty much stepping into uh, into situations like this. And I tell you, I was trying to like justify it first. I'm like, I, maybe I shouldn't get involved. But then I'm like, when, when I start thinking, what if I'm not going to do something about it? What can happen? Who knows? Maybe the freaking plane will go down. It's crazy, but that's what we got to do in situations like this. We got to be responsible. We got to be responsible. We got to lead and we got to take care of the things. And thank God everything went well and this was taken care of. Uh, but I will give you another example of uh, really taking courageous actions in different situation. Like me and Tyson were working out in, in Poland. We went to the old field of mine when I grew up when I went to school and we were playing jobs. It was so much fun. And there were two kids showing up that day. And they were young boys, maybe 10, maybe 11 years old. And they had a soccer ball by the, with them. They run into the field and they start playing as we were working out. And I'm like, how awesome is that? These kids are so into it. I, I was thinking maybe, maybe one day it's going to be like a second Cristiano Ronaldo. Or, you know, you don't know if you pursue your goals, if you pursue your dreams, right? You're going to be pushing hard and you live with your full heart. And I'm like, these kids were banging those bags. It was just fun to see them. And let me tell you, we were into the workout, half into the workout, maybe 20 minutes passed by. And what I see, I see two, two boys these two boys sitting down on the grass and putting their faces into their phones. So I saw this and me being me, I already think like, okay, he's not going to go anywhere in life if he's going to be into that phone consuming information. Again, guys, we're talking about consuming because that's what it is. Too much, too much screens, too much consuming, too much, uh, 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 it's too, too much electronics. Uh, they had so much fun, and here we go. So I give it time. And these kids, about 20, 25 minutes, they're sitting down and looking at the screens. And I'm thinking, parents don't know. I'm going to speak up. And Tyson's like, Mom, don't embarrass me. I said, this is not about you. This is about them. Them losing and wasting their life. They came with a ball. They had a blast. And out of nowhere, they got distracted by stupidity. Phone. As I said, you're not getting no phone because that's what happens. Kids in front, like nonstop into the screens. So I come out and I say, boys, you were playing so nicely. What happened? Oh, no, we got a little bit tired. I said, half an hour? Half an hour, it's half an hour. You should be playing for an hour, two hours straight. Hello. And I'm doing a live show. You can say hello to everybody. There we go. We are on YouTube and we are on Instagram right here. I'll be there. Okay, soon. And and I told them, I said, guys, if you love, you've been doing so good. I encourage them. I said, don't waste your time on these phones. These phones will only take away your precious time. You will never get the time back. 
And you will only work against what you've been doing so well. I said, practice more. Leave those phone alone. And you know what I did? They started playing again. When we were leaving, they were playing. That's what the true leader will do. Somebody and somebody might say, you know what? You shouldn't be speaking to, to my kids. Well, first of all, I was uh, my education came from teaching. That's what I do right now. It's also teaching, giving you ideas, giving you examples. That's in my nature. And there is nothing wrong because who else is going to do it for them? Who's going to encourage them? Who's going to speak up to them? Who's going to say something? Maybe no one, right? Maybe no one. <clears throat> and what if, if no one will do that? Then they might end up just looking at the screens like everybody else instead of taking care of their business, the right business that they are meant to do, right? And the other situation, when I was thinking about it, like courage, when I was little, my kids even know this story. I told them the story. I was I was in a, a, a second or third grade. I exactly don't remember, but I was a little girl coming back from school. It was dark outside, but it wasn't late. Normally, my grandparents or my mom would pick me up, but something happened. They were not there. My school from... 30 years ago was literally I would stand, stay, stand on the balcony and I would see my school. I would see kids leaving the school. So it was five minutes, literally five minutes walking. And imagine the situation. is that outside. I go outside. I see kids being picked up by the parents. Nobody's there. So I'm like thinking, what can I do? Should I walk? Should I not? And I see this guy standing there and I see him and he looks familiar. And he's the guy that would come to my uh what are they called the scouts the scouts and i'm like you look familiar but he goes to me i'm here to kill you he says kill you. yes i am here to kill you i'm like what is this and he shows a big knife this story might seem to you like something crazy but let me tell you this is a true story i start running I mean, I probably run like never in my life. I run so fast that probably there was a smoke behind me. I was running. My heart was pounding. I was running. It was very close, but I had a backpack, so I had to run. Uh, as I'm running, he's walking, and he's walking fast. And he's like, I'm going to stab you with that knife. When, when we go back to this situation, and I told my grandparents, they exactly don't they don't recollect what happened after they called the police there was something going on but as i was running i was thinking only to get to the house and I, when i was little i used to was a very afraid to go inside in the in the hallway of the apartment buildings my grandma would have to go and turn on the lights because the lights were uh, every 10 seconds they would be shut down and i was scared as a little girl so so what happens is I'm calling grandma. We left, we were living on the third floor. She she goes, opens the window, and I said, and I can't speak up because I am so petrified. I see this person standing there with that freaking big knife in his hand. So I am paralyzed by the fear. And till this day, I am trying to think, huh? I couldn't speak up. I was a very young person, a young little girl. And what she, I, I just, she said, I will turn on the light for you. And I ran in front of him and he went inside the, the hallway and he started screaming and I was running upstairs and out of this whole fear, I pee in my pants. Are we talking about eight, 10 years old? I exactly don't remember. But how fear can paralyze you, right? So there are different fears different acts of being courageous, different acts of stepping in. Obviously, there was beyond uh, anything. Like, uh, I, I was a very young child being scared by some psycho. Uh, that was, uh, it was only, he was only a few years older than me. I was think uh, I'm thinking he was about 14 years old because he was finishing that school. I was in the beginning. We would have eight grades there. So everything happened, everything ended up being okay and I was fine, but that was a traumatic experience for me. And all these different things, when you think in life, like what is stopping you? What are 
what are the acts of being courageous? What are the situations right now that you that requires from you to be courageous? What you need to do? Like even when I think about my, uh, uh, that was a very significant situation. So like, think about it. Like, don't you think, don't you have situations like this in your life that you are like, I wish I would have spoken or I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have acted differently. Uh, there are situations like this in life and I'm sure you have them. And I have another just example. I'm going uh, to tell you when, uh, when I was about to pass the exam in my uh, into my high school, into my high school, and imagine that uh, we were, I was studying uh, biology. Biology and English were my uh, really primary. Oh, we have a visitor. Don't let him just bark. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I was getting ready to pass the exam in my high school. And I was studying. I loved biology. That was my thing. I loved it. And the teacher, like out of nowhere, a few, few weeks before, she was asking, oh, okay, so who is ready? Who wants to take this, this exam that is going to happen in a few months? But if you're ready, I will ask you three questions. And if you answer correctly, you're going to have additional we points. We have a visitor. Yes. Uh, Scouty. We just babysit him. And we, you're going to have additional point at the exam and think about it additional point that means already passing so what i do i don't do nothing and internally i knew it all these answers to these questions i knew it that i was prepared but the fear of failure fear of uh, who knows what that what's the worst thing could have happened the worst thing was i wouldn't answer but nobody would really do anything to me uh, my grades wouldn't change that was just like a test uh, a verbal test before the big major exam and i remember this how i regret this for a long time i was like how could i not done this and to this day i'm thinking so what happens in situations like this don't you think like that don't you have a situation moment like this that when things like this happened in your life and then you eventually, you, you think like, okay, enough is enough. I need to be more courageous. I need to step into action. I need to make the more bigger moves. I cannot be afraid because what is the worst thing that can happen to you? If there is no risking life, what is the worst thing? And, and why I think that why I give you this example is because even in a, in, in, in the weight loss, when people starting weight loss program, I am a coach. I, I coach people. I've been coaching um, uh, body, per, personal bodies, our bodies for many, many years right now. But I've been also doing a mind coaching, helping people scare in their life and help them and uh, find uh, the purpose and uh, create the schedule and be more organized, more disciplined. But even in simple thing like weight loss, becoming better, working out. It's a struggle. People are don't take enough steps forward. They say one day, the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, fear of something that will, you will be missing. If you've been eating all your life or you've been eating for 10, 20, year, 20 years and you gain 50 pounds, there should be no fear in you. There should be only a reason and why and a strong why behind why you want to do this. It drives me absolute crazy when women uh, have kids. I have two kids and I run businesses and, and somebody will tell me I take care of the kids. I don't have time. That's an excuse. It's beyond excuse. Like take care of yourself. The kid is seeing you. You are 300 pounds or 250 pounds. How can you not want to make the step forward? Guys, there's no such a thing. You have to take charge of your life. You need to. Somebody has to shake you up and say, listen, this is now. This, this it will never happen again. Think about it. That was never identical situation, never identical day. It's always different. The time is ticking. The time is running. It's this now we have. And how are you going to take charge of this hour and this moment is up to you. 
So start cons consuming, uh, consuming in your mouth and your mind and scrolling on the Instagram and Facebook and doing bullshit stuff. Let's get down to the real thing. Do what's important. Lose that weight. Work out. Eat healthy. And become the captain of your ship because this is your life. There's no one else. If you're going to take this responsibility once and for all, you're going to feel much better, I tell you. Because I see this all the time. Like I even tell myself in the situations that uh, I'm, I'm less responsible. And I'm like, no, this is not good. This is not a good example, not only for myself, but for my kids. It, it, we all have this. But what are you going to do with this? Like a lot of people will not do anything about it. And that's the difference between the ones that will do something, even if a little bit later, but they're going to do it versus those, don't, those that don't absolutely. So what it's going to be for you? Do the things that you were afraid of. Like take the accountability for, for it. And that's why you need the accountability coach, someone that will push you, that will elevate you. So you can, you can overcome that fear. Because a lot of times when you have that person by your side, it's going to be easier for you. It's proven. Like me and Steve, like I'm accountable to him. He will be accountable to me. We do these things daily. We talk about our victories daily. We have a literally on a schedule thing pops out. And he told me yesterday, he had a coaching client. He's like, what are these hearts and these signs on three things? I'm like, that was me remodeling our schedule. He was like laughing. What is that? I add this to the schedule. I also strongly recommend you to add some triggers on your calendar. Like in the morning when my clock goes off, I see love, courage, and fierce. Be, be, like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just go forward. And you can th put three words that comes out on your phone in the morning, something that will be like, oh, wow, this is good for me. I need that vi vibrancy. I need uh, I need some good words. I need that mantra. I need that motivation. I need, but it comes from you, so you create one. I don't need to tell you because I might not know you. If I, knew, if I know you, I can tell you this. If I'm going to be coaching you and being with you, I will tell you what these things can be based on how you've been acting. And that's the accountability coach, right? Compare your fears to the others. Like, how did you feel? Like, what what happened when they when the fear uh, you know vanished or um, when when the courage vanished? Like, how did you feel after when you actually did that thing? When you when you step into something, when you took action, it felt amazing. And I know that it felt damn good. And I, I can put two, three hundred percent on it. But you know what doesn't feel good for us? And don't, this is all emotion. When we actually hiding in the shell, when we actually not stepping into our role, when we not role models, when we not um, when we not courageous, when, that's what doesn't feel good. Like think about these things that when you were just like afraid of signing up for a weight loss program, afraid of starting the program, afraid like so many people will be watching that video that should have been in a top shape during the summer, but yet. They didn't take any action for a year straight, half a year straight, said that COVID and other things is excuse. And stop looking for excuses because they grow like weeds everywhere. That's what it is. It's like weeds popping. That's what the excuse is doing. It's everywhere. You got to get rid of them. You got to get rid of them once and for all. And they still will be popping. So you, what you got to do? You got to execute on action, guys, and start being courageous. The free, confident, your self-esteem will be boosted. You will feel happy, accomplished, and more. And you can describe it. I don't need to describe for you. You can describe it. And today I wanted to encourage you to become courageous to take the acts of action and, and take care of your health, your, your family, your friendship. Because 
we have all these different sections in our life that complete us, right? We have our health, our wellness. We have our love, marriage, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. We have our friendship with our friends. We have our purpose, mission. And, and if those areas are not truly fulfilled, and we were actually talking about this with one of my country clients, it does not, you feel like you're not living, like you're not vibrant. People ask me, what are you taking? It's 9 p.m. Why do you have so much energy and I get up at 5 a.m.? Guys, because I live with a purpose. I live with a mission. I love what I do. And I strongly recommend you to do what you love. And if you're working full time and you don't have that time, that schedule to put something on your schedule that you can actually create a schedule for things that you maybe want to start or want to start a business and do something, send me a message. We'll be more, we can talk and we can get you in some good program that will lead you to this. Because we've done it. We've done it many times. And I know that you can do this because all of us can do it. All of us. You just need someone that will lead you in the right direction. Yes. So set up the reminder on your phone, my friends, and let's talk soon. Let's just remember, no excuses, ladies. Come here on YouTube channel, sometimes on live on Facebook, here on Instagram page. You want to check more out other episodes today. I just posted on my feed information here on YouTube channel. You can just click on the link and, and watch more episodes. There is more of them coming up. You can see the clips. We talk about different things. And again, it was a pleasure having you. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope that you got a little bit of a, a little bit of taste of being courageous and not being afraid and stepping into action and doing something that you've been postponing for so long. No excuses, guys. Thank you for watching.